Hello, everyone. This is Laura coming to you today from In Time Apostasy. I hope you guys are doing well. Now, today I want to talk to you about a subject that a few people have been commenting on about that I'm a woman and I should be quiet and I shouldn't be taking authority over a man and all of this, and which I 1000 billion percent agree with in its correct context. Um, and where that applies in the Word of God, and where it applies um, generally in the body of Christ. So the first thing what I'm going to be doing is I want to read these two scriptures that absolutely come up all the time. When I not all the time, but quite a lot when I'm doing um, these videos. And the first thing is this: First Timothy two eleven to twelve. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, to, but to be in silence. And the other scripture that keeps being brought up is: Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is also not permit. Sorry, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as on as also saith the law and if they will learn anything let them ask their husbands at home for it is a shame for women to speak in the church now before i make any comment on this i'm going to reason let's reason through scripture about what these scriptures actually mean okay so what i want to do is just show you that first timothy 2 is instructions for what for public worship okay this is this is about public worship this is not about women on youtube this is not about women or any you know anything like that it's talking about instructions for worship it also gives directions on what women should do for instructions in worship so let's go over here okay and let's look at um what it says here first is this is this is about public worship i exhort therefore that all first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for those that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for it is good and acceptable in god, uh, in the sight of god our savior who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Now it keeps going down here. Okay, um, we're, we're on to chapter. We're on to verse eight. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Okay, again, this is about the next verse is about public worship. In other words, worship within a church setting. In like manner, also. The women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, for Adam was formed, was first formed, then Eve. And I say amen to that. In a church setting, women are not to be pastors. We are not to preach over men. But apologetics is a different thing. Now let me just come over here. So, what does it mean in 1 Corinthians? Notice here it says, For it is a shame for women to what? To speak in the church. Okay, that again is public. Um, when you go to fellowship on a Sunday, that you know you're quiet, you listen to the pastor. That's what that means. We're not supposed to speak in the church when the pastor is preaching. That we keep quiet, which shows respect and honor to the pastor. Um. You know, and here, like, here it says, it says, in the church. Now, this particular script, these particular scriptures here, 1 Corinthians 14, it's talking about tongues, I'm not getting into that. It's talking about the, about order in the church. It's talking about 
prophesying, um, that there should be, um, if they spoke, um, there should be order in the church. Okay. And then it comes down to guess what? Women in the church, the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. They are commanded to be uh, obedient as unto the law. So when we as females are in the church, according to the precious word of God, we are not under any circumstances to be preaching or teaching or be pastoral in the body of Christ. Now, brethren, as we all know, that there are a lot of what they call women pastors out there, and it is forbidden by God for a woman to be a pastor. It is very clear in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, 2 to 12, it says here, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband, which is male, of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no strikey, striker, not, not, fil not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children, his children, in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Now, as you can see here, the Bible is very clear that the, the man should be, a, it should be a pastor. A man should be a pastor. It does, it says, it's all the way through here, it's masculine. Okay? Um, the twelve apostles, men. They had wives, they had children, but they were men. Now, what I want to do is, I'm, first of all, I'm showing you that this particular issue about women being silent in the church is within a church setting. So when I'm in church on Sunday um, and the pastor is preaching, I'm not opening my mouth. I'm keeping my mouth closed due to the respect that the pastor is preaching and I'm showing him respect. And also because the word of God tells me as a female to be quiet in a church setting. Amen. And the same with worship, public worship in the setting of church. I've shown you in scripture it has to do with the church. Now, this is what I am doing right now, guys. So, the, compare this to what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm doing apologetics. Now, what exactly is apologetics? It's not to apologize for something or whatever. Now, I know a lot of you that listen to me know what apologetics is, but an awful lot of people don't really get it and they don't understand. So, let's look at this. The term apologetics derives from the ancient Greek word apologia. Okay, so what is apologia? Okay, apologia is a formal defense of an opinion, position, or action. And it's the Latin word for apologia from Greek speaking in defense. Okay, so that's what that means. Okay, when, when I'm speaking in defense of the gospel, the Lord tells us to defend the gospel. And why does he tell us to defend the gospel? It's because right now there are many false prophets and false teachers that have arisen and they are deceiving many. And there are many dear precious souls that are being deceived out there. What does the Bible tell us to do about that? Does it tell us to sit back and do absolutely nothing? Or what exactly does it tell us to do? We look at the book of Jude, um, and in chapters 3 to 4, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly, 
earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men. So this is what God is telling us to do: that we should earnestly contend. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old, old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and die, denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, guys, in you know. Basically, I just want to ask, you know, to, to say this, that what I am as a woman, I am called, I, I am not, first of all, I'm not a bishop in the church, because that's forbidden by God. When I go to church, I'm silence in the church setting. When I worship, I'm obedience to God. I don't have a husband, so I can't talk to my husband. I do have two pastors that I talk to that are very sound in the faith. Uh, one of my pastors has known me since I was 24. I'm now 53. And he was the one that advised me that I should go into this particular ministry because God has gifted me with a certain gift called discernment. Now, does that mean I'm absolutely fantastically amazing? No, because we all have different giftings from the Lord. And we are all to use those giftings in the body of Christ to help one another. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help one another with the different types of gifts that God has given. And that's one of, you know, one of the gifts that God has given me. So I'm going to obey him and do that. As you will notice here, it doesn't speak about women. It doesn't speak about men. It says beloved. And um, all of us as the body of Christ are the beloved okay so i wanted to clarify between two different issues here okay so guys that's all i really kind of wanted to explain to you that we are earnestly to defend the faith because if we don't do it the lord the lord commands us to do it because when we do it even if even if we reach one human soul for jesus it's well worth defending the faith and exposing false teachers. And yes, it's, you know, uh, it's yes, we keep continuing on, continuing on. But we don't know, and I, personally, I don't know when I'm speaking who the Lord is speaking to or, or, or that the Lord is using me to help other people. And I'm here to help and expose what I need to expose. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed very recently that I'm not doing as many videos. The reason, reason why is you will know that I lost my sister and I've been trying to come to terms with all of that. So I'm not doing um, videos as much as I want, you know, as much as I would like to. Um, and also, I mean, there is a lot of information that I've put out. And when I see a video that I need to feel, feel the need to bring to you, brethren, I will do it and I will research it correctly. But I just wanted to just explain uh, the situation at hand. And I just pray, I know we're all going through a very rough time right now, but I just pray that the Lord is, is blessing you and uh, that we're, you know, we need to keep putting on the full armor of God and stand in the truth. Praise God. So guys, that's all I have for you at the moment. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord let his light to shine upon you. And I'll talk to you as soon as I can. Bye for now. Bye bye.